We spent about a month learning how to make our own kombucha and experimenting with it. So here's what we learned. We're first going to start off with a basic recipe and then also talk about some tips and tricks. First, make your tea. Bring filtered water to a boil for black tea or just below a boil for green tea. Then add in your white sugar as well as the tea bags and let the tea steep for one to five minutes. We recommend checking the packaging directions to see what they recommend for brewing time. Just a couple things here to note because we honestly spent way too much time considering all the possibilities. It doesn't really matter what type of tea you use. That's kind of the bottom line that we learned. The green tea will have a slightly lighter taste, but honestly, we could barely tell difference between the two once we added in the flavors at the very end of the kombucha. The other thing to note is that it really doesn't matter if you do loose leaf or bags. We found the bags a lot easier to use and we just recommend getting the cheapest one. After removing the tea bags or straining the loose tea leaves, let the tea cool to room temperature. This is an incredibly important step because if you don't do it, you'll risk killing the microbes. The first time we did this, we wanted to speed up the process and so made a ice water bath to cool down the tea. It was a lot easier the second and third time we did this, where we just were patient and waited. Once the tea's at room temperature, add in your store-bought kombucha or starter tea and SCOBY. We used the SCOBY from Fermentaholics, which was great because the SCOBY and starter tea all came in one package. We tried this out twice, highly recommend it, and as always, we've linked this and all the other materials we used below. This SCOBY essentially acts as the home or coral reef to your bacteria and yeast that are doing all the fermentation inside your jar. Next, you'll record the pH of the kombucha using pH strips. While you don't have to do this, honestly, I think you'll just feel a lot better, especially if you're a beginner, knowing you have some pH strips and you're not just solely going by taste. The pH should be 4.5 or lower. Cover the jar with a paper towel or coffee filter, something that's going to allow some airflow but block out most other things. Then let it sit for one to two weeks at room temperature, monitoring the pH level every other day or so. It doesn't really matter exactly how much, but you do want to keep an eye on the pH because it should continue to lower until about three. During that one week period, both the yeast and bacteria are hard at work making your kombucha transform. The yeast are taking that sugar that you added and fermenting it into ethanol. The bacteria then take the ethanol that the yeast produced and produce acetic acid, which results in that tangy, acidic flavor. To learn more about this, definitely check out our other video that goes through all the details as well as the science behind kombucha. Now, determining when the kombucha is done, well, it's really up to you and how tangy and acidic you want the tea to be. The longer the kombucha sits and ferments, the more sour it gets. We found that in the two batches that we did that we started just from scratch, it took us about seven days to get to this pH. At this point, the first step of brewing kombucha, also known as primary fermentation, is done. Congrats, you did it. You should have a slightly acidic and tangy tea. But you might be wondering, wait, this doesn't taste like the store-bought kombucha I've gotten at the store. And you're right, it doesn't because it's unflavored and it won't be carbonated. Adding flavor is super easy. All you need to do is pour your kombucha into a new bottle and then add in some fresh fruit juice or puree. We tried grapefruit juice, pomegranate juice, strawberries, lime. This is the place to tinker and explore. We generally found that one-to-one -one ratio of the kombucha tea to the new flavor was best for us. If you're anything like me, the first time you do this, you're going to constantly be questioning if the kombucha is working and if your SCOBY is safe. Because, well, let's be honest, the SCOBY looks really weird and often is kind of questionable looking. But that is normal. There are two things in particular you want to look for with your SCOBY. One, it should be floating. And two, there shouldn't be mold. We did find that some of this took a little bit of time, like our SCOBY wasn't floating for a day or two, but then started floating. So it's also just about monitoring it over time. Also, those weird floating strands at the bottom that are brown are actually yeast and not mold. If you're in this process and you're kind of unsure and want some confirmation, we've linked below a web page that we found really helpful with lots of pictures of what's okay and what's not. But congrats, you did make kombucha, and be sure to check out our other video if you want to learn how to do carbonation. Okay, hopefully you're feeling confident enough to give this a go. If you try it out, let us know, and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos.